Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm Inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we've got some important changes to take a look at in Zim 7.1. These will definitely be changing the way you do your code, although it's not a major change. It's, it's a parameter name change. And we also are going to take a look at a default font and a few other things. Okay, so, oh yeah, look, there it is, a default font of Courier. So that's pretty cool. That's a label on the stage. Let's take a look. I don't want to sign up to Facebook. How do I kind of get that down there? Okay, so uh, bubbling parameters. Right, so we're in Zim 7.1.0 there. Let's make that a bit bigger. Plus sign, plus sign. And we're coming down into a fit template. And here it is, default font equals courier. So now all things like buttons and uh, radio buttons and check boxes and anywhere where fonts are being used in Zim components will be courier. Um, now that's not too hard to do because really all those components use a label. So it was really just a matter of um, going into the label code and saying, hey, if there's a default font set, use that. Otherwise use Arial. So in the past, the default font has been Arial. So if we don't have this, we save that and we view out here in a browser, 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 be doo, be doo. and a refresh, control R, there's Arial. All right, let's just reduce that. Okay, so um, that's kind of neat. And if you're using the Zim namespace, then you can also use a Zim dot, Zim dot default font. All right, so here's a label. And what I would like to do is go in animate this dot animate. Note that we've center regged it on the stage there. There's a few minor changes to center reg and center as well, where it will automatically if the label were already in a container and we just say center reg, then it would center reg it on the container that it's in. Uh, same with center. So um, you can read about that. So here we've got animate and I'm going to open up uh, a Zim Duo technique, a configuration object. And we used to say obj colon and if we wanted to say rotate this rotation colon 360 mm, times two. So we're going to rotate that around and that's why it's center edge so that we can rotate it around the middle of it there. Now OBJ was always a little bit of a tricky parameter because it doesn't necessarily mean that these are the properties that we're going to be animating and animate is quite an important feature of Zim so a lot of people animate and well what we've done is made a change to say props there. Uh, the option, another option would be properties, but we held a, held a vote and properties maybe was just a bit too long for people to type all the time using this. So that became props and also props is kind of cool. Props, man. Uh, now OBJ still works, but it's been depreciated. Now the reason we didn't use props in the first place is that coming from CreateJS, CreateJS, uh, tweenjs, already had a props parameter uh, that would allow you to add extra things like whether you wanted to override or loop. And that's sort of about uh, maybe a rewind thing. That, that's sort of all uh, that was in there. But when we flattened the CreateJS tweenjs system, we didn't want to call our parameter props in fear of sort of confusion there. But over the last couple of years using animate, it's just sort of bothered me a little bit having this generic OBJ and having to tell people, oh yeah, it's OBJ, obviously, why not? That's that's an animation object. And the other thing is, it's not really the animation object. So I was running into problems there, as I've just done. The animation object, uh, well, I guess that could have been an animation object, but there's already a configuration object. So there's a, uh, we have to call this a configuration object, and when it's in animate, often I accidentally call that the animation object. And yet, so was this OBJ, the animation object. So um, anyway, that's the reason. I realize this is a fairly large change. All our documentation and hundreds of examples that are out there are going to be showing OBJ. But I think it's a wise step forward to change that to props. 
So there we go. There's pleading my case. Like I said, for backwards compatibility on the Zim Duo technique here of the configuration object, you can also use OBJ still if you so desire. But there it is, props. Uh, by the way, anything that was in the CreateJS props, such as Override and the way they did their looping, um, that that had already been moved or flattened, as I mentioned, flattened into Zim um, into Zim parameters. So the way we loop is loop colon true here. We don't go into props and set the loop there. You could actually still do that, and it would pass it through, but uh, it it was sort of long gone. I haven't used the props in a while, so that's now called CJS props. So if you take a look at the parameters, there's a CJS props that allow you to still pass in the traditional CreateJS props if if you ever did that. But I don't think there's any reason to do it. Okay, so great. Let's um, and we've got props. Let's uh, say a time of um, two thousand. We'll wait for a while to see this. So wait, colon one second. And do we need anything else in there? Let's see. I guess that'll just animate it. Let's check, take a look. Check a look. I'm gonna refresh. There she goes. Oh, that's a sort of. I know. Why don't we uh, say comma ease colon uh, back in out, and that will animate it sort of uh, more excitingly. We yeah yeah did you see that props it's almost like a propeller okay great so that works and you can see as well if we drop back to obj there and let's uh, animate three times and go even faster with the obj refresh that still works so uh, but I would recommend uh, using props now. Okay, so that's one thing, the animate. Uh, another place that we've changed a fairly popular parameter name is in the drag and in gesture, and that is the rect. Uh, we could specify a rectangle that would be the boundary for what we're dragging. So let's take a look. Let's say we want to start dragging this when we finish here. So we'll put in a call and we'll call this function right here. Now, when we call a function from what we're animating, we're welcome to collect a target. Uh, that automatically gets sent in to call the target. You can also pass in params and deal with it that way, or extra parameters that way. But automatically, you get the target here. So we could say target.drag. Um, so at this point, once the animation finishes, we're going to start dragging. Of course, we could have started dragging right away, but we can't drag. Let me wait for the animation to finish, and now I can drag. But as you can see, or as you expect, we didn't set a bounds on that, so we can drag it right off the screen. So now uh, we'll open up. Uh, it's still the first parameter, so if we wanted to, we could just put the our rectangle right in there without specifying a parameter name. But assuming that we have other things to add, uh, we, we might want to drop to the Zim Duo technique of the configuration object here and say the new one. Uh, rec still works. In the past, this is what we have done, create js.rectangle. And we specify, say, zero, oops, that's not zero, <laughs> zero comma stage width comma stage height. There we go. So now we're going to drag within this rectangle. Now, uh, that kind of had been niggling at me, if there is a word such as niggle. Uh, that has been niggling at me for a little while because we have two different rectangles. We have the Zim rectangle and we have a CreateJS rectangle. And so if you need to explain that to people who are just arriving at Zim or arriving at code, you've got two rectangles and they're going, ah, I can't understand. So a Zim rectangle is a display object. It's one of the shapes, so rectangle, circle, triangle, blob, squiggle that you can put on the stage and see. Uh, a CreateJS rectangle is a data rectangle that really just needs um, a rectangle specified. So a starting X and Y position and a width and a height. And it has some other, uh, other methods on it as well, which can be handy, but we tend, 
in Zim, we tend really only to use this, or for the most part, we use it as just a, a boundary rectangle in drag and in gesture. Gesture, yeah, and um, in the physics as well, when you want to set the boundaries for the physics world. So now we've made an adjustment and we've created a new boundary object. So rather than having rectangles, we just say a, oh, sorry, all the time that would have been a new create.js dot rectangle like that, uh, needing the new keyword to make that object. So now uh, we don't do that. We have introduced a boundary class, boundary. And that's stored in Zim if we so desire. But so a Zim boundary class, and it just keeps the same thing. So x, y, width, and height. And let's see. Oh, because of that as well, and rect is kind of, you know, especially when you've got a rectangle and you're dragging a rectangle and you've got rect inside, rect is a little bit generic sounding. So now that we've solidified that, uh, we can call that boundary is that. So our first parameter is boundary rather than rect. Rect will still work. It's been depreciated though. Uh, there you go. Now boundary, we, we probably would have been calling it bounds or bound, boundary is fine, but bounds is shorter. <clears throat> but CreateJS has uh, sort of grown up with bounds being the bounding rectangle around an object, a display object. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can't use bounds there. Uh, so we've just sort of hopped to boundary, and that's fine. <clears throat> but that was one of the reasons in the first place we called it rect, is because bounds was already taken. And I guess we just didn't think of boundary at the time, or thought it might be too long compared to the shorter rect, or whatever. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so uh, let's see this work then, shall we? That's what you've all been waiting for. Show us! Oh, let's see it! Let's see it! Oh, oh, no! So what do we do wrong? Oh, no semicolon there. <clears throat> okay, so that's an easy one. Oh, I don't want to go home. They put that home button awfully close to the refresh button, haven't they? Uh, I, uh, you know, every tenth time or so I go to refresh, uh, there's a control R, of course, I hit the home by accident. So now I'm picking this up and it almost seems to work. Uh, can you tell what's happening there? The registration point is contained by the rectangle that we've mentioned. So in each case, the, the registration point is roughly in the middle of the O there, and that's what stays in the stage. So that's as expected, and that is fine. Um, a way that we can deal with that, it's kind of neat, we can, uh, boundary has a method, it has a single method, dot, contra oh, dot contract, so we can contract right on there. Now if this were a circle, it's really quite easy, because you would contract just the radius of the circle, so circle dot radius, or something, whatever your circle is, and then you would find that the whole circle fits in there. Maybe we'll show you that after, but for now, to contract the, the font, uh, we would want to say label, if I can find that L. I've been having problems with my L's lately. How about you? Keep on hitting K's, keep on hitting semicolons. That's like that time I hit a comma. Maybe my chair's not straight. Okay, so contract label dot width, now divided by two, and also contract label dot height divided by, oh, divided by two. So the contract has, is it's sort of multiple parameter based. It can have just, if you pass in one parameter, say a hundred, it would take a hundred off of each side and contract your bounds by a hundred. That would be great if the radius of your circle were a hundred, then all of a sudden you've, you know, it's never been easier. You've got this circle. Well, it could be easier. We could automatically uh, not use a registration point, but automatically use the width and height of the object that we're dragging. And that's actually what gesture does, uh, but that becomes a little bit more complicated. It's important with when gesture is being used because you're always scaling and rotating things. 
But when you're just dragging, merely dragging things, usually the shape that you're dragging is staying the same size, so it's not that big an issue. But anyway, uh, contract label width, uh, but we don't want to, uh, this is how much do you want to take off the, the X on the left-hand side. We don't want to take off a whole width. We want to just take off half the width because the registration point's in the middle. And same with this. So what this does is it takes off half the width from each side and half the height from the top and the bottom. We could specify how much we want from each. Because this is center regged, that works. If we didn't have a center regged label, if it were just centered, then we would contract it 0, comma, 0, comma, label dot width, comma, label dot height. OK, so hopefully that's clear. You can play around with that. So let's see what happens now. We refresh. So, oh, I can't try again. I have to wait for it to spin around there. Ah, there we go. Close enough, anyway. Cool, huh? So now, bump, 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 bump. Uh, we've got props on there, so that's pretty cool. All right, well, we've seen them. Just a summary, the default font. Uh, can be set that can be a custom font too so you can load your own font through the load assets you can load a font and specify the name that you give the font in the load assets there and that would work as well um, that works on buttons and 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 other things as well things that have fonts uh, here anytime of course you can make a button and override it by specifying the font in that button through the label parameter Okay, so here we then looked at animate and we see that we've got a new parameter called props. It basically is doing what OBJ used to do. We've depreciated OBJ and uh, it's still available to use for backwards compatibility. We also set up a boundary, uh, our boundary class, and now we have in drag, the first parameter is called boundary. It's no longer called rect when you're using the Zimduo technique. Uh, rect will still work for backwards compatibility. Well, and I did say that I wanted to show you that ball, so let's just show you that quickly. I'm back out of here. Uh, ball dot, what are we doing? Dragging. Oh, uh, I needed, well, that didn't even be a ball. New circle is what we want. Dot drag. Let's give the circle a color. Um, Oh, we also need to, at this point, we need to give it a radius. There's no way when we're chaining that we can find out the radius. We could hard code it. So let me just show you that. Frame dot uh, color pink, comma 100. So, oh, we need to center it on the, or add it to the stage, add to stage. Um, let's see if we're doing the boundaries. Uh, well, heck, we'll just center it on top of the other thing there. So a circle has a center registration already, so we don't need to do that. Dot drag, and um, if we want, we can just pass in a new boundary here, boundary like so, specifying zero comma zero comma width. Oh, stage W stage height and dot contract uh, 100. So that's a drawback when you're chaining. The circle has not been made yet, so we can't just specify circle dot radius because it hasn't been made. So oh, there's a couple of ways around that. We could go var, r is equal to 100 for the radius, and then we could put r here and r there, and we can change it in one place. It's one option. The other option would be to put the circle in a variable. Var circle is equal to, we'll do the center and then circle dot drag. And now we can go circle dot radius. Okay. So those are two options where we make sure that the circle is created store it in a variable. Now when we drag it, we can access the circle's uh, radius property. So I'm not sure which way I would do it. Probably I'd be a bit lazy and I'd just put 100 and 100 in each, maybe. <laughs> Let's say, I don't know, we're showcasing this code somewhere. Okay, so circle.drag, new boundary on the stage, and we're contracting the radius of the circle. So let's just see that. And I'll just comment out the Font stuff, save that, 
and view, oops, view it here, refresh. Uh-oh. Add it to the stage, circle.center, yep, stage.update, drag, boundary. Uh, is it the same color? No. Nope. What do you think happened? F12. Mm. Do it. Why don't we see it? Oh, boundary. Maybe there's something wrong with the boundary. Let's just uh, put the circle on the stage and see that. So we're debugging. My stage.update is underneath. Refresh. So, Rush, 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 after all of this work we've done, where did the circle go? I was just doing a whole bunch of work with circle or center and center reg, but no, that's not it. It's not the same color, is it? Circle equals. What have we commented out? It's got a default font, and there's our thing. New circle frame that's color. Uh, oh, <laughs> oops. Okay, I think that might be the other way around. Frame.pink. Wow, how many times have I made a circle, huh? And we can go back to centering this center. Well, there you go. It's probably nice for you guys. Sometimes I'm all so highfalutin here working away and everything's going perfect. And it's probably good for you guys to see a, a bug. So we refresh. I'm not sure why, well, I guess, uh, with the, that must be zero or something like that. We got a circle made with a radius of zero. So there it is. And look at that. Would you look at that? Isn't that crazy? So that's cool. Um, like I said, uh, it's it's been rare since I've had it this easy. You usually have to do some sort of uh, calculations in, involved and in all this. Perhaps it doesn't look terribly easy, but it's not too bad, is it? And if you, like I said, if you wanted to do it in the one step, uh, this would work as well. New circle. It's 100 there, and we contract uh, 100 here. Let me just show you quickly what that looks like if we don't contract, just so you, you get the idea. Okay, so that's working. If we don't do the contract on it like that, then the registration point of the circle is kept within those bounds. So now half the circle goes out. All right, that's great. Hey, this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim, and we'll do another What's Bubbling as well that shows you something new. Speaking of these circles, in gesture, when you gesture, it automatically keeps the whole object within the boundary, but it traditionally uses the, the bounding box. And that's a problem when you're drag or when you're gesturing with like pinching and zooming and, and moving uh, circular. Uh, shapes. So we have a solution to that that we'll show you. Uh, there's also a new way to load assets um, that uh, that we'll show you as well in the next bubbling. I'm Inventor Dan Zen. Have a great day or night. Ciao.